All right, so in this video, I'm gonna review Roadhouse. I just watched it. It is a, it's a, a movie that needs to be talked about because there's a lot more going on than just the movie, whether it's good or not, how Connor did, how Jake Gyllenhaal did, whether Jake Gyllenhaal can fight now, because he can. And uh, there's a lot to talk about there, but uh, we're gonna lead off by talking about the Sports Illustrated video uh, or interview that Connor McGregor did that is like, wow. And the reason I'm showing it to you on GK is because, I don't know, to me, someone else finds a thing and then I see it through their channel, like, that's where I saw it, rather than going to the Sports Illustrated. So GK is the one who got it first, so some credit to them, uh, to him. And uh, he's got a great channel anyway. But nonetheless, I'm going to show you this because, wow, dude, Connor is... This is the worst I've ever seen him by a mile. This is not even close, dude. I would say if you're going to rank the worst interviews Connor's ever done, like in terms of being really, really concerning, uh, the number one is probably the one that he did with Ariel. But he just seems like wasted drunk in that one and, and then probably doing something else to like keep him awake. And he's all, I train two times a day. To do this is something totally different where it's like, whoa, dude, like this guy, you can't party this. Like there's a, there's a, uh, anyway, I want to show it to you first and then we'll talk about it. But also, um, by the way, I am dropping the Diego Sanchez and Joshua Fabia part two video that uh at, that sh that's sh it depends on when you see this but it's going live at uh 11 30 a.m on uh, central time today which is thursday friday <laughs> jesus friday it'll be live at 11 30 central and it's gonna blow your mind i got so much more evidence on this kid it, it's if you thought the last one was shocking trust me watch this one also it is uh it's another 39 minutes of just it's endless. It's endless how much information and, and, you know, actual videos and documents there are to show how deceptive and con artist Fabia was with Diego. So give that a look. Uh, and then also Gabrielle and I launched our channel. Look down there. Link is in the description. Uh, the, we have 13 and a half hours of content already done. Like it's all ready to get. So this is going to, this is going to be the beginning of a very consistent output of, uh, of clips, the, uh, the long form podcast, uh, that'll be up by the end of the weekend and uh, go from there. So go give those a look. Now let's uh, go ahead. Oh, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. All right, so let's rock and roll and look at this because wow, dude. Okay, so like I said, let's just, just watch Connor. You tell me what you see here. This is like, I've been up for multiple days and I'm shutting down. Consummate professional, 75 movies made. You know, I I'm blessed have entered into the movie alongside him. He was patient with me. He gave me guidance and I just took it. You know, we had a good rapport on set. He has 75 movies made. I have 75 bar fights made. And that's it. We had a good back and forth. Now, gosh, man. Okay, ser in all seriousness, dude, like that, look at, we're going to watch it again in a second and watch Jake Gyllenhaal, dude. Like, Jake Gyllenhaal knows something's wrong. You know what I mean? Like, he's like, whoa. And I want to tell you what I think that we're looking at here, okay? This, to me, looks like Connor was raging for multiple days and nights, okay? So, like, you got to, I mean, I don't mean to sound, uh, I don't know, like, it, just as an education to people who have never lived this kind of life, right? If... If Connor, like if, if, if you get on a bender like this, right now, I've never done, I've never done, uh, I mean, GK thinks he's on meth. I've never done meth. I said the thing about Ryan Garcia where I'm like, dude, he looks like he's on meth. Some people hit me up that actually know meth. They're like, nah, I don't know, dude, you would see this, that, or the other. So like, there are people, I don't know anything about that drug at all. I've never even seen it in real life. Um, what I do know about though, is when I was much younger, I ran multiple days in a row, you know, like where, whether it was, yeah, I mean, like a long time ago, long, long, long. I mean, I blow, it's not my thing at all, but 20 years ago, you know, literally that's crazy, dude. 20 years ago is when I, you know, had done a couple of times where I would go overnight. Then the next day you're still running. And then when you're, this is what it's like, like it's, it's as if like, you know, partied overnight and then kept on going, like, to just keep it going the next day because you got something going on. You're, like, on a trip with your friends or whatever. And then when you hit the wall, which is, I don't know, for regular people, either the next day or maybe the day after, I don't know. It's, it, this is what happens. Like, there's, there's no amount of charm. There's nothing you can do to overcome the fact that your brain has short-circuited. Like, this is what that is. Where I would, I mean... <laughs> 
I, I, I assume anyone could see there is something wrong with Connor, dude. Like, Connor is the most clever, most charming. He's like, dude, he's the, he's the most charismatic guy on earth. Watch this again and look at Jake Gyllenhaal. Jake Gyllenhaal is like, whoa, bro. He's not doing a very good job acting like everything's cool. Professional, 75 movies made. You know, I was, I'm blessed to have entered into the movie alongside him. He was patient with me. He gave me guidance and I just took it. You know, we had a good rapport on set. He has 75 movies made. I have 75 bar fights made. And that's it. We had a Dude, good... Dude, why did they put this out, man? Why on earth did they put this out? I don't even understand. I don't understand. I don't understand why they put this out at all, dude. So anyway, obviously there's a lot going on with Connor. Let's talk Roadhouse. Okay, so Roadhouse is awesome. 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 It's so good, dude. I was I, like, I was not expecting much from Roadhouse. And I don't really know why. Like the preview I just looked, I was like, oh, this is going to be cheesy. Also, every remake Hollywood makes, generally speaking, sucks, right? Like, when was the last time they made, like, an awesome remake? You know, it's like a, a reimagining of blah, blah, blah. You're like, oh, God, here we go, you know? And and also, a lot of times, what you get in those movies is um, is you get, like, oh, we got to hit our diversity quotas. Like, that's one of, the, like, the number one complaints about every single remake. They're all, oh, cool, okay, let's let's do a remake, but this time, let's make the person black, and let's make the person, you know, make sure we have enough Mexicans and Asians. And what's crazy is that is exactly what they did in this movie. There's, I mean, because like it was done with Amazon Studios and they absolutely hit all their diversity quotas and it's not a problem at all. Like that's the thing that's so crazy to me is like this movie, like there, okay, so there are two, two pieces of content that have come out in the last six months that shatter, absolutely shatter the idea that you can't do whatever this diversity thing that they're trying to do is and simultaneously make good content that is going to actually be impactful going forward on society or whatever you're trying to do. And I'll talk about that more in a second, but I do want to say, okay, actually I took some notes on this dude. Hang on. So when it comes to Roadhouse, right, I knew it was going to be good in the very first moment because in the first scene, the absolute first scene, it's like some kind of grimy bar that's doing like these, uh, you know, these fights in the in the middle or whatever. And uh, and Post Malone is the guy who's fo- who's fighting some other guy. And Post Malone looks like a guy who knows how to fight. Like for I'm sure all of you guys, my biggest beef with with fight movies is they can't make it look believable. It's so bad. You know what I mean? Like you're like. Oh my God, man. You're trying to sell me this is a tough guy? Like, that's not that's not how a tough guy moves. Like, that's not how a person who knows how to fight fights. Like, this is a joke. It's not believable. And so it ruins the movie for me. And as soon as I'm watching, I'm like, dude, Post Malone is actually moving like a person who would be in one of those kind of grimy bar fights and is like a tough guy. You know? So if you've sold me on Post Malone... I have a feeling that Jake Gyllenhaal and Connor are probably going to do pretty well. Now, I would have bet against Jake Gyllenhaal because in Southpaw, he was horrendous. Like, that's one of those movies that, that's like a perfect example, dude, where like Jake Gyllenhaal is an incredible actor, incredible actor. He sells that character in Southpaw top to bottom, 100% absolutely does it. But the second he started boxing, I was like, it's like that, that movie hurt my brain to watch the boxing scenes, you know? And he admitted, he's like, dude, I had never boxed. He's like, I had no boxing experience at all. And uh, it showed, absolutely. But in the previews for this movie, you could tell, you're like, oh man, dude, like, they like wh- either the way they're choreographing it or Jake Gyllenhaal since Southpaw, which was a ton of time ago, has actually trained. And now he moves like he knows what he's doing. And it's, you know, it's it's believable now. It's fully believable, you know? Um so I knew that was going to be good. So when Post Malone looks good, I'm like, all right, so this is going to be good. And it was. Now, the uh, the other thing, so also, also uh, Bob Mennery is in it as a hitman. Like he comes up like uh, Jake Gyllenhaal breaks his hand, which is awesome. Um, you know, the, oh my God. Well, actually, hang on. Okay, let me say this. So Connor's begin, like the first, and Connor is awesome in this movie. Like Connor is awesome in this movie. If anybody says he's not, they're fucking haters, dude. Like, I don't give a shit what anybody says. Connor was great in this flick, dude. 
Bottom line, Connor was great. And honestly, like when you watch the, when I watched the trailer, I was kind of like, oh man, you know, cause they, they picked, um, I actually think that Connor's character was way, uh, more kind of, I don't know, like layered than it appeared that he was going to be in, uh, you know, in like the previews or whatever. It just looked like he was going to be like, they're like, hey, Connor, come in here and play crazy. Now he is totally crazy in this movie. Absolutely. His character is nuts, but he's like charismatic nuts. Like he's awesome. His character's fucking awesome. And in the very first, the first scene, you know, like he's like, uh, you know, when all else fails guy, it's like, okay, we tried to like, you know, drive these guys. When all else fails, you call in, you call in this guy and uh, God damn it. What's his name? Anyway, whatever. We call it Connor. And so he gets a phone call. He's he's down the balcony because he just got caught banging some guy's wife. And he picks up just like, what's up, guy? And he just walks through this, like, Mexican town completely butt naked. Like, just like, what's up, dude? Just walks, it comes into, like, a like a, a flea market, just stone naked. Just like, what's up, guys? And then he just takes shit, burns it down, dude. He is a savage in this movie. He pulls it off completely. I loved his character. I loved the movie. I thought the movie was so much better than I expected. Now, I again, you know, you go into a movie expecting it to be incredible and usually you're disappointed. You go in with bad and, you know, like kind of like, oh, this movie's not going to be very good. And usually you're like, oh, I was pleasantly surprised. Like, I genuinely enjoyed this movie. And I'm not an action movie guy either. Like, if you if you want to know, like, what my, my per, like, like best movies are like if you're like just tell me about your favorite movies they're none of them are action movies none zero of them are action that doesn't mean i can't enjoy an action movie but i like character driven stories you know like those the movies that i recommend to people generally are like these weird movies that all happen inside of a room you know what i mean like one of my favorite movies ever is this movie called the invitation from 2015 not the 2021 version or whatever that is there's two different ones the dinner party one uh it's like there's a cult thing and like it's old friends don't watch the trailer do not watch the trailer if you're gonna watch the invitation the 2015 one do not watch the trailer the trailer completely ruins the movie the whole point is you don't know what the fuck is going on so like a movie like that or uh anyway so i like movies like but this movie was sick dude genuinely genuinely good now on the diversity stuff and this is really important to discuss here okay so diversity equity and inclusion we all know ruins everything, right? DEI shit ruins everything. This is on the same, you know, and you just had like Star Wars, the Alkalite just drop, made by Harvey Weinstein's assistant. And she's like, you know, as a queer person, as a queer person, when I was young and I saw, you know, I saw Frozen. I was just watching this interview. When I saw Frozen and it was like, they like got rid of the like princess and like, you know, traditional Disney princess trope. And I like, I cried throughout the entire movie because the like true love is between two sisters, you know, like non-heterosexual true love. And it was just like, wow. Like if I would have seen this when I was younger, I think I would have had a completely different life. And you're like, shut the fuck up bitch jesus you know what i mean shut up seriously shut up this is who's in charge of the next star wars god who would have guessed dude it's like as soon as as soon as kathleen kennedy made two shit movies in a row that everybody panned which was last jedi and then the you know the last final skywalker whatever okay i was a star wars guy for the record okay growing up i Star Wars was my shit. I, all the prequels. I went to midnight shows, dude. I would go to the midnight shows. I just thought it was fun because I was super fired up for those. And The Last Jedi was the last one that I went to. because It was like, what the fuck? And so after that, when everybody hammered them for being woke, she is an egomaniac psycho. And she's all, oh, you want to see woke? I'll give you fucking woke. And now Star Wars is all woke trash, okay? But people are rejecting it. And that's why I bring it up. Because... In Roadhouse, you have tons of black characters. You have tons of Mexican characters. You have, you have all kinds of diversity, right? Even though the main characters are white, right? But like, and that's not even true, dude. One of the other main characters is Latina. The other one, one of them is black, whatever. But like, you have tons of diversity, very obviously intentionally done. And you only notice it if you're a person who's looking for DEI shit. And the movie's awesome, Okay. So like it can be done and had they, as long as they wouldn't have had Dalton be a black guy, right? Like if they're all round roadhouse and now here's Dalton and he's black, you'd have been like, fuck you. I don't give a shit how good this movie is. 
Because again, it's not about having a black main character. There's a million movies that have black main characters that I love. It's about replacing a, a, an existing character. They're all, we're going to remake it, except this time the white dude's black. You're like, fuck you, dude. You know what I mean? So as long as they don't do that, you know what I mean? It's like, it doesn't matter. Now, the other movie or the other piece of content that I alluded to, which is actually even better, like actually significantly better than Roadhouse. Like Roadhouse is great. Like I really enjoy it. Like I said, but like, it's not groundbreaking. Okay. Uh, Blue Eyed Samurai on Netflix is like fucking groundbreaking incredible. It is one of the best pieces of fucking content I've ever seen in my entire life. It's animated and I'm not like an anime guy, but Blue Eyed Samurai, if you watch that, if any human being watches that entire series and then tells me that they did not love it, I will literally be like, you are a fucking dumbass. Like I, I will take away your sovereignty over your own taste, you know? It's like, I don't know, it just wasn't for me. I'd be like, you're a retard then. Seriously. What, what's your fucking taste then? You know, if it's someone that I'm like friends with, so as long as they don't have an aversion to gratuitous violence and lots and lots and lots of nudity and sex shit, like, you know, if they're like, look, it was just too much for me. Too much violence, too much sex shit. It's not for kids, dude, by the way. Blue-eyed samurai, I cannot stress this enough. If you're, if you're a parent and you're all, Oh shit, Jesse said this blue-eyed samurai thing is good. And you turn it on with like a like a 10-year-old? Nah. It's actually even worse probably for like an 11 or 12-year-old cuz there's so much sex shit that they might kind of understand. Don't not at all for fucking kids, dude. Not at all for kids. And you will never hear me say that about a movie. If you want to show your kids fucking Roadhouse, do it all day. You want to like but don't show them blue-eyed samurai. It is fucking gnarly. Like gnarly sex and violence. But the the story is about a female samurai who is pretending to be a man who tapes her boobs and all this shit so like you almost you have like a trans almost it's not like it's not because she's trans it's because you know you're it's like the girl like it's in feudal fucking J japan you know and like you can't i don't know whatever she wasn't supposed to be able to train to fight if she's a dude and so she just continues everyone thinks she's a dude she's not but that and that movie is fucking ruthless dude it is so fucking good that is one of the best fucking things I've ever seen. Dude, you know what? I'm going to download that. I'm flying to Phoenix uh, today, and I will be in Scottsdale and Phoenix for the weekend. If you see someone that looks like me in Scottsdale, it's me uh, this weekend. I'm going there with my buddies for spring training, so that's happening. Uh, anyway, that is probably enough. Go watch uh, Go watch Blue-Eyed Samurai. Go watch Roadhouse. Blue-Eyed Samurai is a series, though. It's a bigger, you know, bite off, but... Uh, it'll hook you instantly the very first scene you'll you, like you you'll watch the first scene and go oh shit okay this is gonna be good it's fucking awesome um and uh definitely watch roadhouse and definitely if you are in a position to tell connor something tell him like maybe it's time to scale it back dude like maybe it's time to seriously start considering rehab you know because man um oh my god i did want to say this dude i did want to say this just in closing okay so the best line from roadhouse for sure okay so roadhouse is a great movie but the best line of the entire movie is conor mcgregor jumps onto this boat that jake gyllenhaal's on and they're fighting and and connor's all oh look at this our own little octagon and jake gyllenhaal or dalton is like who taught you shapes? Because <laughs> they're on a fucking boat. So, who taught you shapes? It's a great line, dude. And I just ruined it for you. So, uh, but hopefully I have encouraged you enough to watch it that, uh, you know, that you will. And uh, look at this. Oh my God. No way. No way. Right as I'm recording this, I am not even going to turn you guys off. We're just going to go like this and like this. And we're going to do this together. Check this out in case you needed more confirmation about Connor coming back. Watch this. Ooh, dude, Nina Drama has been putting up some fucking thirst traps. What's for dinner? I'm start. Oh, I know what's coming. I know exactly what's coming. She's going to do OnlyFans. That's what the fuck is going on. 100%. I was wondering why she's doing so many thirst traps, dude. I'm like... Where, what is this coming from? She's setting up for an OnlyFans. Bet that. She's going to make a fucking fortune, dude. 
Okay, so uh, Michael Chandler. So the fight is on too. Look at this, dude. You gotta go watch Ro Roadhouse. You gotta go watch Chandler talk about the fight is on. You gotta watch uh, the interview with Connor where he's like spracked out and go, oh my God, this guy needs to go to rehab. So a lot of good things, a lot of bad things. Let's go. I'm gonna be in Scottsdale this weekend. If you see me at a bar, say what's up. We'll take a picture. I'll be around. I love you guys. Bye-bye.